Hey guys, this is FTV here for FTV Productions, of course. And in this part of the video, I'm actually going to be showing you how to uh, light up your scene and uh, make a like make a background and a ground floor for the Pokeball to rest on. And then we're actually going to be uh, doing the uh, opening animation also in this tutorial. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be setting up the scene first, and then if you guys want, you can continue to watch the video to learn how to animate this to open up. So uh pretty much uh, what i have done uh here is what we left off so first thing we're going to create the uh the stage here so i'm going to hit alt w here and go to my top viewport zoom really out and then go ahead and create a plane on the top viewport make it very huge okay and you can actually i mean the default settings are going to be 4 and 4 here so let's get, change that to that i can keep that there and then just move it somewhere here. Doesn't really matter where you put it. And then you want to move it down until you see the Pokeball resting on it. Okay, something here. Okay. Okay, now I want to turn this up. So basically, you want to go inside of Modify tab, change this to Modify List, and you want to ch choose a modifier. It's called Bend. So it's going to show up here. It's called Bend here. And um, you want to change the Bend axis to X and increase the angle. Uh, decrease the angle, actually, to uh, make something like a U shape here, um, something like this, and then you just want to hit limit effect and increase the upper limit to something really high. Keep on making it higher and higher. If you hold on Control and do it, it's going to be much faster. So uh, I'm just going to stick with something like this, and the reason you see sharp edges here is because of lack of segments. So you just want to go inside of plane and change the width segments to something like 20. So that that smooths it out. Okay. Now uh, we just want to select this entire assembly, the stage, and hit hit R and on the Y axis you want to scale it off so it's it's like really large stage like this. And then you just want to zoom in. Oh so our Pokeball top is here. I'm just gonna rotate it, I guess, 90 degrees. Um, the lights here actually make it quite hard to read what's going on. So I'm gonna rotate it uh, 90 degrees, something like this, and then zoom in. So here we have our Pokeball here, and uh, there we have our stage. Now, if you go ahead and render this right now, uh, before that actually, I'm just gonna make a uh, very quick material for for the uh, floor for the stage here so let's change that to stage and just gonna change the diffuse to white and then just go ahead and apply it to the stage okay but now uh, if we go ahead and render this out right now uh, it's gonna look look like very bright because of all of these lights here so uh, you can actually go ahead and set these lights up or what I do is basically turn those off so you just want to change this from all to lights so that you can easily select the lights and actually uh, that light was outward oh no it was in let's change that to off okay and the same this to off and the ambience has to be off as well uh, that makes it dark but if you go ahead and render this out uh, you'll see that it looks pretty cool because of all these shadows here. Now my render settings are pretty much the same uh, as before, so uh, there's nothing nothing really new about it. Uh, also, uh, we could go ahead and hit M and uh, change the color of it to be somewhat darker, something like this. So we'll stick with this, I guess, and then let's hit render again. By the way, you can hit Shift plus Q to render it out. And what that does is uh, creates this very cool looking reflection. Now the way we get that reflection is because uh, this thing right here uh, is uh, is ending like there. So if you go ahead and hit eight uh, on the uh, on the keyboard, and you want to go ahead inside of uh, environment and you want to check gradient. I already did that actually. Uh, let's let's show you how I did that. So you want to select gradient here, gradient, and uh, just want to hit M now on the keyboard. And just go ahead and click the gradient and drag it onto your empty material slot, make it an instance, and hit OK. So what that does is uh, it creates a gradient for you. Uh, now you want to edit it so that it's lo uh, it's something like uh, like uh, yellowish orange or something like that. Uh, 
so the way we do it is to simply go inside of color one and uh, choose a color. I'm just gonna stick with uh, this, make it lighter. Okay, and now you want to note down these RGB values. So it's 27, 150, and do 29. Select this and you do it again. So 26, 150, and a 229. For the third, I'm gonna do the same. So 26, 150, 229. So what that does is uh, it gives you like a uh, color there, a single color there. So I guess we can make it just a bit lighter even more so that it's 27 108 so desaturated so 108 here and this is just about playing around and uh, figuring out the settings that are work that best for you so hit OK and once you have that uh, if you go ahead and render this out your environment which is uh, which is uh, default by which is black by default it's going to be something like this color here and then if you go ahead and hit M again I'm sorry and change the uh, color of the of the stage to something grayish here and render it out um, your stage is going to look like this like the one you see here and the highlight here is because this suddenly uh, uh, ends and the environment starts getting reflected here and since the environment is lighter than the uh, than the stage uh, it actually looks like a specular highlight so we don't actually need those lights there uh, but um, they're still there okay let's give it another cool shot here okay so that's done about the environment let's go ahead and do the animation now so uh, basically to uh, do the animation you want to change the pivot of the top sphere here to something here and then open it up so um, doing it is pretty simple all you need to do really is let's first go ahead and delete these real lights uh, because we don't really need them and then change this from lights to all okay and let's go ahead and select this and actually our scene looks pretty dark uh, it's because if we go inside of perspective click on that actually uh, plus and hit configure change this to lighting and shadows and you want to change that to default lights hit OK so that changes that to default but it won't affect your render anyways so we don't need to worry about that cancel that by the way I have GI and all stuff uh, turned on and uh, full quality okay to open this up uh, you want to select the the group here and you got a group and open what open does is it temporarily ungroups it and then you can actually group it up again I'm just going to stick with the open and then to select the uh, the top which is an editable poly by default uh, actually before we uh, let's go ahead and close the group and turn the pokeball back so that it's like this okay and then let's go ahead and open the group okay now we want to select this uh, and affect pivot only and now all we need to do is hit W and then move the pivot somewhere over here we can actually go ahead and turn on uh, vertex snapping the way you do this is right click here and check vertex and then go ahead and turn that on uh, what that does is it it like allows you to open it up easily so if you go ahead and uh, select the middle dot here next to it and you can actually stick it up wherever you want. I'm going to stick it somewhere here I guess. Okay. Alright. So now if you uh, select effect it only and turn off the snapping and hit R you can actually open it up and it opens up like this but uh, what you see is this stuff here which is uh, which is not good which is not good at all so basically uh, what you want to do is change the pivot here so let's hit Z here control Z and then effect pivot only and uh, you want to hit W and move it down so that it's actually somewhere here in the middle there okay and actually move it in just a bit and now if you go ahead and uh, rotate it it's going to be something like that. But we are going to be uh, getting rid of this black sphere here very soon. Okay, let's hit uh, Alt uh, Control Z 
to uh, undo that. Now let's hit the inner sphere and hit Alt Q to isolate the selection. Now we do know that if we go inside and convert this to an editable poly, uh, go inside of polygons, and do we know that uh, these are the polygons that that form the black ring, and also some of the polygons here somewhere. If we exit isolation mode, we can actually see which those polygons are. So let's go ahead and select those and hit Alt Q now. Okay, so these are the polygons that uh, we need here. So is are they? Yes, they are. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, keep these polygons by uh, moving down. And if we go ahead and hit detach here somewhere, detach. Name this uh, band or the black black band. And uh, and hit delete. I don't think I deleted that. Okay, so we deleted that, which is pretty good. But we are running into another problem. If we go ahead and open this up, the this is what we see. This is not good. Okay, so we need to uh, we need to get rid of this and make this into a circle. So that is pretty simple. You just want to go ahead and add a turbo smooth modifier here first. Uh, I'm sorry, not in this, but in this here. So apply a uh, turbo smooth modifier. Turbo smooth. Okay, change the iteration to something like two here. Okay, now uh, we need to uh, tweak this up. So hit F4 here. I'm sorry. I uh, was going to go inside of editable poly over here, and I'll go ahead and hit Alt X here so that we can go inside of X-ray mode here, and then uh, select this. Go inside of Edge again. Uh, I'm sorry, vertex. And let's go ahead and delete these vertices actually, and take this, move it up. Take the, these, move them somewhere here, and take these, um, moving down somewhere here, I guess. Okay, and if you go ahead and hit Alt X here. Okay, so this is showing up, uh, which we can fix, of course, by going ahead and selecting this vertex, moving it back. Okay, so now looks uh, looks pretty good. All we need to do now is select this and uh, move it up. So there we go. Uh, also, uh, to open that up, simply just go ahead and go into frame zero and check Auto key and take this key button here and then let's go ahead and go over to frame number 60 or two seconds and select this move it 60 or maybe even uh, yeah 60 degrees so uh, if you go ahead and play that back it's gonna open up okay and uh, what you can do to actually make it look white from the inside is simply select the bottom sphere here Actually, select this uh, bottom sphere here, and uh, you wanna uh, unclick that, and you wanna go inside of polygon. Uh, simply select one this, and then hit grow. So grow that, and here and there. And when it gets to the end, you can actually go ahead and select these uh, manually. Okay. Okay. So let's select these, and hit M on the keyboard to bring up the material editor. Select a new one, and name this a light. Change that to a V-Ray. Actually, change that to V-Ray light MTL, and then hit assign material to selection. So that makes it a light. Now, if you go ahead and render this out right now, you're going to say G to kill the grid. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the inside is lighted now. But if you have seen like a Pokeball in real world, you probably know that some of this inside is black. So uh, that is pretty simple. You just want to select these uh, ones that you think should be black. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead select. Pretty, uh, I mean, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Okay, just want to select these rings. Uh, hit M. Change the second color 
to another V-Ray material, change that to black, okay, and hit assign material to selection. What that does, it adds, adds like a uh, stuff here. I'm going to actually select one more stuff here. That's not perfect at all, I guess. Um, just going to make it look good. I mean, it has something like this if you have a good close look at a, an open Pokeball. So, sign. And then if you go ahead and hit render. you can see the effect that it creates so uh, yeah that is uh, that is pretty much it let's go ahead and pause the video now and I'm actually gonna go back here okay and I'm gonna make a couple of Pokeballs and uh, make the scene make the scene look good so uh, I'm resume when it's done actually uh, you can just go ahead and select this and hit go to group and hit close so that closes the group and by the way uh, if you go ahead and group ungroup you have to do it again because uh, you detached uh, this by the way. So it's going to group, group again, name this Pokeball and uh, that makes it one single group. You can actually check it, okay, it's one single group which is pretty good. So let's pause. So as you can see uh, that's my final render. We can actually go inside of Photoshop and uh, brighten this up to uh, to make it look even better. But I'm just going to stick with this. Uh, it looks pretty cool to me. But um, yeah, of course, pre Photoshop is going to make it look better. So uh, as you can see, uh, the way our scene is set up, uh, this little ramp here, what that gives us is the is these reflections here. And I actually uh, duplicated this a couple of times uh, to make it look good. And because of the reflections, we can actually see the reflections here, and this reflection uh, goes here somewhere. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Um, the final render is looking uh, pretty cool. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If the video helped you. Please go ahead and sub me. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe.